Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for stopping by. We're in the studio, of course, and uh, we're going to do some really uh, interesting uh, work today. We're actually going to, um, I guess we're going to uh, practice a technique which is really, I think, uh, going to go a long way for any art watercolor artist if you're looking to... Um, try some new uh, material that you maybe haven't painted before and so forth or if you're just you know you like to um, work with um, photographs and, and workbooks and um, magazines and things like that like any kind of print media this is just basically uh, sectioning off a, um, with a small mat sectioning off a um, part of a painting of a larger painting and focusing in on that uh, smaller section and usually the same pattern repeats within a painting most often. Um, especially if it's a quality painting that you know of a favorite watercolor artist you have um, or one of the um, great um, painters um, in history. When they're doing their best works and those would be the works we would see in museums and so forth like um, or in books and, and magazines you might see articles and things of, or online. Um, their work tends to have a typical pattern to it and so if you even section off a small part of it you you will see that um, you're basically just you're just sectioning off a smaller part of the larger whole and and that technique will be the same throughout the whole painting so what I'm saying here is basically if we section off a smaller part like this and practice the techniques and the um, actual drawing and painting of this part chances are we're going to have the idea for the rest of the entire painting. So let's try this. We're going to try this section here. And this is a great technique. I, I've used this for many years now um, to try to get an idea of a certain painting. Let's say I want to try to copy or um, for practice purposes and it works great. Sometimes a, a larger um, painting or work um, it, it's a lot, you know, can take a long time to draw, a long time to paint, and sometimes myself I'm very busy all the time. I cannot afford to sit down for six hours and like do a full painting like that all the time. On the weekends, yes, but if I'm practicing, I tend to find that the smaller vignettes of a larger work can really work great. So let's try it, see how it works out. Uh, I sectioned off a piece of um, good watercolor paper. This is uh, Arches. Um, this is uh, Arches uh, paper, and it's the um, satin finish, and it's the uh, bound, bound uh, block, and uh, I just have my round watercolor brushes and a needlepoint brush, my standard palette. If you haven't, uh, if this is your first time coming by, you could just look up uh, Chris Petri my palette if you type that into youtube you'll uh see a whole video on on the colors i use how i set up my palette and so forth the details of that 
And um, okay, let's start out with the drawing here. I just use a number. This is, I think, a number seven um, retractable pencil. It's a mechanical pencil, and uh, we'll just try to get a good drawing here. Let's see. We'll start off down here. And this is not exact, exact. I'll just try to get it close. Okay, that's um, a quick contour drawing, and um, now we can try. We're going to do our our standard um, fresh clean water. I'll use a larger brush, and what we'll do is we'll use the glazing technique here. We'll we'll do the lighter washes first. And then we'll start blocking in and filling, you know, blocking in and kind of um, doing some negative shape painting around the um, whiter f colored flowers here. So let's get the lighter wash on first. And this will help out um, really a lot if you have a, sometimes have a tendency to um, kind of do um, paintings that um, uh, have things that kind of look uh, cut and pasted on the paper. Um, uh, sometimes in my paintings, I, I always look for that. Um, so lost and found ed edges are, are a big part of um, watercolor painting because it really helps to have a feeling of uh, three three dimensionality in the painting. Um, I have done a video on lost and found edges. If you look up Chris Petrie uh, on YouTube, Chris Petrie lost and found edges. I've done uh, a couple of videos on that, so you can go back and, and catch up on that if you need to. But it's pretty much a very standard. Um, watercolor technique a lot of watercolor most art, watercolor artists use so if you're newer to watercolor um, basically lost and found edges are just um, sort of not having everything painted around in a sense so we'll, we'll kind of show how it how it works here so let's we'll get some color cerulean blue cobalt blue a little bit of uh, burnt umber to uh, gray down the uh, blue. A little bit of mineral violet. Lizard and crimson. A little bit of uh, cadmium orange. Sap green, and I'll put a little bit of uh, burnt sand into the sap green just to mellow it out a little. All right, let's get into this here. Let's do our first washes. Nothing fancy, just we're getting that first wash on. You can do like that scrubby kind of technique, or or you can just. 
do more of the um, maybe blot out a couple whites with some tissue or paper towel just to make sure we're not going over all of this. And then down below here, some alizarin crimson and alizarin crimson and uh, purple. And more of the blue mixture. Now I'm going to start looking at the flower portion. And again, you can rewind this uh, video and take a picture, or um, if you have two, if you have another device, you can leave, maybe leave it on pause. The uh, picture in the beginning that we did with the um, painting. So I'm just going to look now at the. I'm focusing on the uh, painting and I'm looking at the um, looking at where the shadowy portions are falling onto the the flowers here and Okay, and then I'll just do a little splashing technique with some of the blue mixture. And that's about it. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to speed up the um, natural drying um, time by using a blow dryer. Okay, now we can get back and we'll start again with some more greens here. Um, olive green, sap green, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. French ultramarine blue maybe. And then we can start doing negative shape painting, which, which is just really simply painting around an object and then the object appears as we paint around it. So now we're going to make these petals of this flower appear as we negative shape paint around them. And we're using some green and blue. splashing and we vary the tonal value here a little bit of splashing just to for some variety. Fade that out like so. And 
we can use a little color change here. So we'll add some of that burnt sienna and sap green, French ultramarine blue. And we'll keep it darker over here and then fade it out a little bit over here. Alright, that's looking pretty good. And we can use some uh, olive green up here. So this is basically, you know, the, the negative shape painting right now is really the taking over art. This is the technique we're using right now for the most part. And we're just going to be, you know, painting around this uh, gorgeous flower here in the center of the uh, painting. And some cadmium lemon yellow. Cadmium yellow. French ultramarine blue and some burnt umber. And then this adds again the, the effect of three dimensionality. We start to paint behind behind these petals and And I'm just mixing up a mix here just for this. All right, so that's pretty much it. We're, you know, if you, if you find something where a color you might put down, you, you can just, we blot it up with the tissue and and some cadmium lemon yellow. So we can, and we mix that color around a little bit just to give the, give it that lost and found edge look. So that's the lost and found edges. The leaves are yellow, the petals are yellow, but yet we're also putting some yellow in the background to make it sort of feel like it's got a dimension, like it's breathing and it's not just all painted around completely. Same thing with this. So these are the lost and found edges we use here uh, in the in the um, here's the petal here's the background the lost and found edge from this to this is the, about the same tonal value same here tonal value is about the same some other petals over here And you can have fun with this and practice up on the different uh, flowers that you might like. These are, you know, some simple like daisies and, and wild flowers. I'm not an expert with uh, flowers and so forth, but um, if you like flowers a lot and you, ha you really enjoy gardening, you know, you can try all different style flowers and 
and use the same techniques, you know, um, lost and found edges on some of the petals of the flower, negative shape painting around some of the other edges. So it sort of makes the flower appear when we paint around it with the darker tonal values, like the, all these areas. And then our other areas, the shadow areas of the flower, the petals, they become blurred, the edges, and that gives it a good look, a good feel. All right, I hope this is fun. Try this at home. I know you're going to really have a fun time with this. Um, just a couple basic techniques, of course, of painting around an object with a darker value. And you have the object appear, negative shape painting, and the lost and found edges. Having some edges blurred between, let's say, two petals of a flower, and then some hard edges, like around here. And just uh, using a nice variety of colors, mixing some good good variations, and uh, this is always a good uh, effect. All right, we'll see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed this. Hit the thumbs up if you do like this video, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. All right, bye-bye now.